Hello, bit of an update video this one. Do you remember the rather lovely little Southfly X? Really fast, stupidly fast little quad, uh, which is absolutely tiny, it uses these little 65 inch props and you can run it on a high voltage free battery. Super quick, but the one thing I didn't like is that the SPI receiver it's got inbuilt in that uh, board is so short range that by the time you've built up max speed, you're out of range and you have to turn around and come back again. So, I want to install this little XM Plus inside. There's there's room. One of the problems is with it, it's not obvious exactly how it installs, so I thought I'd take you through it. And I need to kind of work it out as I go because there's no particular manual for this board that I can find yet. So I'm going to kind of work it out and uh, show you what's happening, but we're going to need a close up for this, so join me. Okay, so here we have the little cell flight, and I've already just removed the free plastic screws there just so I can get this off easily. Now, happily, Happy Model have actually published the documentation of what the Crazy B F4 version 2.1 looks like because I thought I was going to have to guess. The The problem we had here was this section which was kind of a bit undefined. So what we've got here, these two little pins there are RX1. You've got RX1 uninverted and RX1 inverted which is what we need for SBUS. We've got TX2 and RX2 here but they're uninverted so we can't use those. Now my problem was before it was documented I was guessing that one of these was going to be TX1 for Smart Audio and I was guessing it was going to be the last one but now they've uh, actually published documentation it appears to be the third pin so what I'm going to do for starters I'm just going to take that out uh, and see if we still get video and we shouldn't have Smart Audio because what we're going to need to do well we've got two choices really we could say oh I don't need Smart Audio and then just hook up our receiver to um, RX1 here, but although one pin uses TX and the other uses RX, we can't we can't mix the two protocols together. So the the the, the better or more complete thing to do is to lift this pin out of there, take it over to TX2, move Smart Audio to UART2, then go back to RX1 to connect up the inverted input to SBUS. Uh, and then we have to find a 5 volt on the ground, which is going to be on the underside, helpfully enough. So a little bit more complicated, but I'm just going to double check this first by taking that third pin out and making sure we still get video. Basically, if we still got video and an OSD, then we, we know that we've taken the, the smart audio pin out. Right, you'll see here we've got the green thing flopping around and I've got the little g watch there. So I just want to just double check before I do anything else that we're going to get something. Yeah, and you see we've got uh, video coming through there, okay. I'm not going to bother looking at Smart Audio because th that only can be that pin, so I'm happy with that. Okay, so now we've removed the green wire from there. To hook it up properly, we need to go down here to TX2 and, of course, connect our receiver, our SBUS connection, to hear the inverted RX1 signal. However we still need to get a 5 volt and a ground. Now, normally you'd have pads, and this has got it in here, so we can plug that in. So you could, of course, just, you know, open up that wire to take it out, but there are a couple of pads. They are, unfortunately, under here, which is why I've just removed the motors. Carefully take this off. Turn it over. And if we look very carefully here, there are three pads. You can probably see these two easily. That one's already got some solder on it. But what we have here is a ground five volt and an LED strip connector. So we can use the five volt on the ground to power our receiver and then go around the other side for our inverted RX1. So yeah, it's a little bit involved and these pads here are quite easy to get to but obviously you're going to need to be a little more careful when you're going into there and there because these are quite small so steady hand time and uh, delicate soldering well let's give that a go and, and see what happens shall we so here's what we've done and it's a little bit hard to handle now it's all sort of attached to this bit so there is my s bus wire coming in from the receiver and on the other side here, we have the ground and five volt as described before. And finally, sort of twisted in there, we've got the green smart audio going to a TX2 there. So now it's the fun part where we get to plug it back together and see if it works or it just explodes. Obviously I need to do a quick change in beta flight to swap 
uh, smart audio from Yacht 1 to Yacht 2 and then put um, a serial RX instead of the SPI adapter onto uh, Yacht 1. Uh, well, yeah, let's see if it works, shall we? And the quick answer is yes, it works. Long answer is I've uh, done a little couple of things different. One of the things I managed to do when I was getting the motor wires out, I was using pliers to, to pull the little plugs. Something went ping and I, I thought, what's that? And it turned out to be when I put it back together, there was this little rubber dampener here, which I can't find. If I don't know if it happens to you guys, if you ever go something goes ping off and goes somewhere, that's it. It's never to be seen again. Uh, so I've replaced it with what I had, which is some blue one. Most of the uh, dampening is, is done on those bits, which is not so bad. I would have also given myself a little bit more wire. If you saw when I put the XM Plus in, I didn't have much wire to go. And it took me a little while to sort of get it round so I could still access the USB. And I could get the wires, uh, the antennas out the side here. Uh, obviously there's one last bit to do, which is to use some uh, cable ties and a bit of heat shrink just to put the the antennas out there which I'll do before I fly it. These are a pain to put back on as well, these little screws, especially that one in there. But uh, yeah, I, I, I did the little change in beta flight to move Smart Audio to UART 2, put uh, SBUS on UART 1 and obviously disabled the SPI receiver. And uh, yeah, we're good to go. As soon as I get those wires in, we'll give it a fly and see how it feels now it's on a better receiver. Well, here we are back again, and you see I've got the antennas sorted out. Note to self, buy new uh, shrink wrap. This is, I've only ever seen this using mains wiring. It looks really weird. I just need some new stuff. So, come out here with a slight weather wind. You can probably see it building up behind me. We've got a storm due in tomorrow. It's actually about a 15 mile hour wind around at the moment. I seem to be reasonably sheltered here from the worst of it. Um, and we're not, we're not here to do a flight test per se. We already know how it flies, so I'm not too worried about the wind. We just want to see if it now flies further. Now we've got the XM Plus installed. So yeah, let's get flying, see how it goes. So we're up and Adam now with the XM Plus installed and let's keep an eye on that RSSI as we go further. And you can see it's, you know, once again, not even breaking a sweat. This is uh, easy peasy for a receiver like this. We got no problems at all. So, I did this video to increase the range, but I really can't not talk about the camera when we look at this because it is not up to the job in my opinion. I'm going along relatively fast, but I can't see where I'm going. It, uh, the light handling on this is awful. If you poke it into the sky, you get a sort of dark background. If you just go along, it's really hard to see where you're going. I just cannot see where I'm going to. That is the problem, and it's very difficult to pick out details. But it's performing fine, and we get a nice sense of speed from the sail fly here, as uh, as we normally do. Even though you know we're we're barely on forty percent most of the time. I'm I'm flying free S again as per normal here, because that's that's what I do. I like max speed. But you'll notice I'm not doing as many sort of acro maneuvers, and that's because I I can't really see well enough where I'm going and um, just for fun I, I ran this flight off like I do by crashing into a bush so I moved down the road here and I have to say this flight left me with absolute shakiness and I'll show you what I'm going down here once again I can't really see but I've already scoped it out once so I know I'm clear but when I turn around here and go slightly offline I go through that tree and I thought to myself oh my god I'm up a tree and it's up high but somehow that little quad got through and um, on both those that crash and that previous one nothing happened the the quad was absolutely fine now I'm showing here the problem I've got with the camera in the warping it's it's fine in a straight line it gives you a nice sense of speed but when you're going around in this sort of closer proximity it's I find it really difficult and uh, this is my last flight of the day because I did this one with the uh, toothpick I thought I'd do the same thing here and sort of in a straight line where you're not in a compressed area which has that distortion problem it's it's pretty good the distortion works for it when you're going in a straight line because it gives a much better impression of speed than you're getting I mean it's relatively fast but uh, it gets even better when you do this so if you've got a sail fly install a better receiver because you'll have much more fun being able to go further 
the only problem is will you be able to see where you're going that's that's another question of course we're only on 25 milliwatts so we do get a bit of break up here and there with these great big metal things in front of us um also for some reason my timing was way out on this roll here i was almost went down there but the the next thing i wanted to do is take both the Southfly and the full speed rc toothpick out together and fly them side by side just to see which one i prefer but yeah it's a little bit of ball ache to install an s bus receiver in this quad but it's well worth it for the results you get anyway that's my video for today i hope it was helpful and i'll catch you in the next one bye for now well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.